Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ir Irwin Stone and I were very good friends. And uh, I first met him in, in the early 60s at a meeting where Dr. Linus Pauling was one of the main speakers. And I met Irwin Stone and he told me that he had collected all the abstracts ever published on vitamin C. And so I said to him, Irwin, you better publish it as a book. It obviously never occurred to him. Anyway, two years later, I again told him, I think you've got to publish that material. And that's why I published this book, Indications of Insanity. Is that, is that, no, mm -hmm. uh, Anatomy of, yeah, uh, what's it called? Anatomy of, an, uh, vitamin C. So, anyway, it's about vitamin C. Yeah. And it's an excellent book, a really good book. Now, at that meeting, uh, Linus Pauling said... The healing factor? Yeah, the healing factor. Linus Pauling said that the research was so exciting he wanted to be alive another 25 years so that he could see what was happening. So Irwin Stone wrote him a letter and said, Dear Dr. Pauling, if you will take large amounts of vitamin C, you will get those 25 years. Who was telling me? I think it was Oscar Falcone who was telling me that um, the introduction between Linus Pauling and Irwin Stone on the topic was that uh, at a conference, uh, Pauling had a cold. No, uh, Tony Parsick, Pauling was sub subject to colds. Yeah. <coughs> Pauling used to get many colds, not at that particular time, because I heard him speak. So, so as soon as he got that message from Stone, he began to take vitamin C, and his cold disappeared. So he became very excited. Now, about this time, patients who had been taking vitamins on their own wrote to him and said they were getting better. So Linus became much more interested. <coughs> and then, uh, interesting story, we'll finish up with this interesting story. Our book, How to Live with Schizophrenia, there was a, a doctor, <coughs> pardon me, a doctor from Carmel. His son was 12 and schizophrenic, and he was not responding to treatment. So this doctor called me up in 1960 and said, what will I do? So I told him what to do, and his son became normal. Now, this was a major event in that small town. It was kind of a miracle here. This doctor's son became normal. There was a second family there, and, and he was a prominent citizen, and his daughter, she was trying out for the Brooklyn Ballet Company. She was also psychotic. And so her father pulled me up and said, would you take her up for treatment? So I said, okay, because I was running some research and I was interested in patients that are difficult. So she came up to the Saskatoon where I put her on treatment. Within a month, she was better. She's still well today. So her father thought this was a miracle. And he became a missionary. He thought he could proselytize. He wanted every doctor in his town to know what had happened. So he bought a whole bunch of our books called How to Live with Schizophrenia, and he began to visit each doctor in turn, leaving a book and persuading them to read the book. And he left the book with a lady psychiatrist who was Ava Pauling's friend. So she took the book, and it was on her coffee table. One day Linus and his wife were having tea, afternoon tea with her, and as I read it, and he told the story himself, as I read it, while they were talking, he looked at this book and it said how to live with schizophrenia, so he opened it up. And then he said to his friend, may I borrow the book tonight? And she said, by all means. So he took the book and took it home that night and started to read it. He didn't go to sleep that night, he read the whole night. Finished the whole book. And he was very surprised, he was really surprised at the fact that we could give our patients 3,000 milligrams of niacin a day without any harm to them. It was so totally new to him. Now that changed his life because at that time he had got two Nobel, two Nobel Prizes. He was having a lot of trouble with his university. He didn't like him because of his, you know, he was outside the box. And he was thinking of retiring, but when he read the book he said, no, I'm not going to retire. And he accepted a job at UCLA as a distinguished professor. Of, you know, San Diego, I think. As a distinguished professor of chemistry. So then he began, he, became, he took that book very seriously. And then, I, he, I didn't know this until later on, and then one day I got a letter from him, and he said, Dear Dr. Hopper, I am submitting this manuscript to science for publication. I'd like you to check it to be sure that we ha I have referred to your work properly. And isn't that great? And he's a real honest guy. So uh, the paper was good, so I wrote back, he said, it's excellent, it's a beautiful job. Then he published his paper in 1968 called Orthomolecular Psychiatry, and that started the ball rolling. So since that time, he and I became very close friends. And we, in fact, published a book together on cancer. Uh, what's another story which we can talk about tomorrow?